You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now is here. And now here's your host, Big Anklevich. I really am ruggedly handsome, aren't I? And Rish Outfield. Hideously ugly. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Dune Steve October. The Dune Steve. What is this? Audio Fiction Magazine. That's right. It's our first episode. Welcome to the Dune Steef Audio Fiction Magazine. Hey, volume three, three hey. number one, page. Just a moment, boys. Oh, Optimus Prime. I've got to interrupt. It's time I declared a moratorium on this volume page number system you've got going. But I kind of like it, Optimus. It doesn't matter. It's confusing to the audience. Nobody understands what the page numbers mean, and there isn't an actual magazine. Aw, oh, but then it, like, feels like... A- Boys, it's excrement. It has to go. Ah, oh, well, you are the leader of the Autobots. He is, yes. I guess. Other than that, congratulations on two years. Thanks, Optimus. Keep fighting the good fight. You got the touch. Right back at you, pal. <laughs> wow. wow. Optimus Prime has been about on our show twice. So pretty exciting. All right. So well, it's episode 77, I think. Okay. So from now on, we'll just say the number of the episode? I guess. Okay. Yes. Today marks our second anniversary. So we thought that we would just get on here, say some infuriating things, and uh, then leave you. And then next week... Or it will be next week. Will it be a few days? When, yeah, when yeah, something like that. I don't know. We will. Get, when I'm finished, we'll have the next story. When he's good and ready, folks, <laughs> we will have another story for you. Hey, guess what, Rish? I've got some uh, some good news for you. They're making a sequel to Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, but how is that good news? Um, th- th- it keeps Gary Marshall from the grave just a few minutes longer. Oh, okay. No, actually, the good news is that ADRG is here for another week with us. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I'm very happy to have you back, ADRG. Yeah, it turns out that he was uh, available for another week. And since uh, 08OT is still uh, off on his sabbatical, we've got him along for the ride for our special anniversary show. Is that sad that it's our anniversary and our longtime companion isn't even here? Our longtime companion. You sure you want to phrase it that way? Why does that sound gay? Should I say something else? No, 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 no. Our yes. good chum. Okay, let, let's go that with the better? first one. Uh, no, I don't like R O eight O T. So I'm very happy to have our, our far superior replacement in it's here right now. Fitting that he's out when uh, we're celebrating our anniversary. Wait, celebrating our anniversary is a little gay too, isn't it? Especially with your hand there. I wasn't going to say anything. But... Don't you dare go there. Uh, We're uh, having a shindig for being around for two years. Just quit when you're ahead, man. Wait, uh, you haven't been ahead. I've really got a fart. I've noticed that you've been doing a lot of that already. We've only been here for five minutes and it's... It was my turn. It's like we've been hotboxing in this room for hours. Hotboxing? Is that another gay <laughs> no, that's, innuendo? No, that's not a gay thing. What is hotboxing? I think that's just what they call it when you have all the windows rolled up in a car and you're in there smoking oh. or smoking pot, I believe, is actually what the... Uh... Oh, because then everyone gets to participate. Right, in there you go. You get that, that lovely secondhand smoke. A uh, s- robot that I don't know the name of? Would you mind terribly cutting out uh, 60, 70% of what we just said? Anything you say, Rish. You're the man, or er, robot. Ooh. So yeah, it's been two years since we started this whole thing out. It has, and, and it seems like last year we commemorated it by playing a story by you and a story by me. Oh yeah, we did our And little... I think we considered doing that this year, but uh, we didn't have any time to yeah. do it. Uh, things have been complicated lately. and That's uh, true. We thought, well, just do a little update, thanks for listening episode, put it on there, and then get back to doing what we do passably well. Uh, Passable? Depends on who you ask. Yeah, I think so. We'll get back to what we do normally. We're also going to do the uh, question and answer episode that we promised, what, like three months ago or four or five months? Yeah, I think that was January that we got... (laughs) <laughs> we asked for those. We're going to throw that in here, too. So uh, hopefully you en- you enjoy that. I don't know uh, if that's possible, but good luck. So what do you think, Rish? Taking a walk down memory lane? 
Well, I, I mean, I don't have a list in front of me of what we've done in the last year, but I believe we did our two long stories yes. in the past year. We've had a lot of fun. Yes. We uh, continue to get together pretty much every week, you and I here in front of these microphones. And, uh, you know, uh, though we've had the odd complaint on, on the, the whole, whole we've been saints. on the whole, it's been a really good time. Yeah. And I think that we wouldn't be still doing it. If we weren't still having fun, if it wasn't something we were passionate about, I mean, I hate to complain every single week, but, you know, sometimes it is work to do this <laughs> thing. Obviously, uh, we still feel like it's worth the effort to keep getting together. And I mean, Like, we were going to watch a movie tonight. Uh -huh. When we were recording this, Toy Story 3 has just come out, and we still haven't seen it. But we thought, well, no, let's record something so we have it for the anniversary and give us a few more days to, I guess, next week's story has... What a thousand characters <laughs> does have s a few, yes. That just makes it exponentially more difficult for you. It does uh, up the ante, that's okay. for sure. Tell me, so we're just we're just going to talk back and forth. There's no okay. agenda, right? No. Aside from my liberal agenda, there's that, but we don't talk about that kind of stuff on this show. So we are going to start, though. Oh, first uh, we'll talk about abortion, <laughs> and then we're going to talk about immigration, <laughs> capital that, punishment. <clears throat> <laughs> and then uh, we'll surprise you with You'll the fourth one. You'll be deported for that one. Jeez. But I was going to ask you, okay, let's say that there's a story that we've recorded and we've got five different people sending us their voices. Mm -hmm. How do you go about making those voices them sound like they all came from the same environment? Like they're all talking to each other. There's really not a whole lot that you can do about it. You just have to kind of find people that have good sounding microphones. So that everybody's kind of got a nice clean sound. The one trick that I use to try and make everything sound like it's, it's in the same room is I have this program that's called the Levelator. Give me your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. And uh, with this program, it basically will take a file, you drop it in there, and it will just level everything up so that it's more or less at zero. Okay. Well, well, I don't understand. Level everything up. It'll bring the sound... From There's parts where people are talking loud. There's parts where you are talking very, very quiet because you do that every single week. And what the levelator will do is match those. It'll even everything out so that the sound is more or less at the same level. And then what happens with that, of course, is when you have something that's really, really quiet and you turn it way up, you will now bring in a whole bunch of hiss that... You know, you don't notice before, but yeah, it becomes much louder when you turn the volume up quite a ways. And so then I run everything through, it, it's a, it, I run it through a filter in Final Cut Pro that is a noise reducing filter. And it will go through and knock out all that hiss so that you don't hear that stuff. And that works out really well. I go through and I cut everything together first. So this story is one whole piece with all the different people's voices thrown in there. Then I level it. Then I reduce the noise, and I think that kind of helps to make it sound like everybody's in the same room. I don't know. I mean, I guess you guys can be the judge. You guys listen to the stories and can say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's my trick, I guess. I'm a one-trick pony. It's all right. You're still good looking, and, you know, that goes a long way, apparently. Okay. You do the lion's share of work here on the show, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. There were, have been a couple of weeks, months, uh, in this past year that we didn't get shows out. And it was partly because of the computer going down, partly right. because of other issues. But I can guarantee you that we wouldn't have had as many episodes hit as we did if we hadn't had people volunteer to edit for us, to produce that's... for us, you know, call their friends together and get them to do voices. And that's really been great. So I am sure we'll have much more of that in the uh, the new year. <laughs> It's funny to call it the new year. In, in the in the upcoming... Issue, volume number. Come on, Prime. Uh, save us here. <laughs> now, now, see, I wonder what would happen if Megatron came in and he said, I declare a moratorium on the C word. See, I can't do Megatron. Those were two <laughs> different actors. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of one of our staples. That would be hard to let that go. <laughs> I mean, getting rid of the volume numbers and crap, that's one thing, but C word. Um... We mentioned what about the, the Y word. There's you warning <laughs> this episode. Now, last week we had the announcement about Nicole being promoted. So again, she's helping us out, trying to just get things 
a little bit faster. You know, it's every little bit helps. I'm not asking for anything on this. It just sometimes people will email us and say, hey, I heard an episode six months ago that said you guys were needing new readers or you were needing somebody to do voices. Do you still? And yeah, that's just yeah. a flat invitation. We always will need that it is kind of thing. It's an open invitation. And the more people that we can get doing that, the better. I think it makes it cooler too, you know? I mean, it's, it's always going to be us just sitting here jabbering after the story's over. But it's cool to get different people's takes when they do editing a story or when they read or, or whatever. It gives you a little bit more variety, I think. I've been doing a little bit of voice work for other people recently. And How dare you? I <laughs> know, I've, I've betrayed and murdered you. Oh. And uh, one thing that's really strange is uh, when somebody will send me lines and I have no context for them at all. Uh-huh. And I, I, there was one that I read yesterday. The line was, he is only a threat to us. And try as I might, I couldn't figure out how to do that. He is only a threat to us. You know, he is only a threat to, he is only a threat to us. And He why, is only a threat to us. Spock, why is Sulu naked? Oh, bye. And so finally I thought, well, maybe it's... I'm so giving po- him all I got, Captain. <laughs> that is illogical, Jim. I couldn't figure out how to deliver that line and so i was thinking maybe it's supposed to be only he is a threat to us or something you know i mean maybe it was wrong the way it was written because i just couldn't figure out he is only a threat to us but yeah on the the one that i edited a couple weeks ago all on saint mark's eve oh yes i remember that story well um I emailed Julie and I asked her if she would, I'm sorry, Julie Hoverson, and I asked her if she would do a line. And the line was, indeed. That was the whole (laughs) line that she had to do. And it didn't even occur to me to give her context of, you know, that somebody tells her, you know, you can go to this place in the cemetery and find out who's going to die. And she goes, indeed? Uh, I just said, you know, just say indeed. (laughs) And so poor Julie is like, indeed, indeed? Indeed. You know, I did three or four times and whoops, this is something that I need to learn. I don't know why I'm even sharing this. I guess I'm just trying to kill time, so it sounds like we've got a real episode. You know, it we has need to get to our standard hour ten at least, right? I mean we're gonna have a lot to make up since we have no story, so we really gotta blather on. And you know, we were going to tap this onto a story, but then we thought do we really want two more weeks to pass without an episode? Yes, that's probably what would happen too, yeah. We were actually going to do it because the story that we have coming up next week is by the same author that did our very first story way back when. So, Shoot, we, that would have been a pretty good anniversary type That would have been kind of cool, but, but it I was seems like not going to make it in time. It was a terribly long story. This is a very Sorry, long story. sorry. <laughs> Horribly long story. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, excruciatingly <laughs> long, I think, is the word you're looking for interminable story <laughs> in fact we're still recording it you can... hideously ugly <laughs> with shark girl fangs oh are we still recording we are well just pretend you didn't hear that folks i wish i could <laughs> uh oh hey maybe we should mention uh we did a voice on somebody's podcast recently oh that's right and uh, i guess it's up to listen to uh, yeah so is it a sub podcast of Julie Hoverson's nineteen nocturne not uh, I don't think nineteen so. nocturne boulevard? Because look, so. it's it's on her website. Oh, it's true. There's a podcast called Warped Space, Warp Apostrophe D, and she did an old story uh Yeah, a, a, an old sci fi story by Keith Laumer that's called The Yillian Way. And, uh, yeah, on that story, Rish and I played some yills, which are alien creatures of one sort or another. And, yeah, we uh, had ourselves a good time making some alien voices. And, yeah, now it's available to check out, to uh, listen to. So if you want to swing over there, we'll put a link to it. Kimberly Poole, apparently, is the one who puts it together. What did you think of the story? You've listened to it already, right? Yeah, I wouldn't mind dipping my foot in her pool. Uh... Sir, that's highly inappropriate. You know, it's weird. I don't know how long ago we did it. <laughs> it's been a while. I can't but remember exactly. I started listening to it, and I have no memory of this place. And uh, then suddenly, I recognized my own voice, of course, and I recognized yours, and I was like, oh, 
I vaguely remember doing this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what I was saying a minute ago. Without context, we hadn't read the story. We're just sort of winging it. And it comes to life in a totally unexpected way when you hear the finished product. Or at least for me. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, just check that out if you'd like. And uh, if you wouldn't like, f*** off. <laughs> well, which brings us to one other thing. This is an episode without a story. Uh huh. So if you're not fans of listening to us banter, then I'm sure you're no longer listening. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay. We are who we. I am what I am. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Oh, t- oh, damn. Oh, wait. OT's not here. Don't you have anything worthwhile to say? I guess we have a long-awaited, well, maybe nobody's been awaiting it, but uh, we did have a episode that we promised to the folks. The Broken Mirror thing? Broken no. Mirror's closed, man. Yeah, it's not the Broken Mirror thing, it's... Uh, yes, I have been waiting expectantly for this as well. The circle is now complete when I met you at... Wait, what, what are we talking about? The question and answer episode. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, I totally forgotten about that. Yeah, right, be, right before we reopened submissions, we asked if anybody had a question that they wanted us to answer on the air, they could just send it to us. And ADORG, do you happen to have those questions? I do. Well, hey, let's let's get to answering them uh, here at the end of the show. So should we just, uh, each of us, take a couple and just read it and spit them out and, and we can uh, answer them, whoever has something to say about it. Okay, so it looks like the, the first question is from Gord Pratt from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Manitoba, you came from the land of many... Wait, what do they have in Manitoba? I don't know. Wild Never? Rose Country? Oh, wait, that's Alberta. Sorry. I've no more to... singing, no. Rish, for the love of Luke Coddington. What? Seriously? Luke Co- Never mind. Okay. So anyways, sorry, before we got into the uh, Manitoba state song... Oh, wait, that's not a state, it's a territory. <laughs> it's a province of Manitoba. Oh, that's right, a place it's a where province. Everybody it's not comes. even a territory. We ride on horses and we wear checkered shirts and we like to touch each other's bombs. <laughs> well, sorry. You are so creative, Rich. I really enjoy your clever songs. Oh, I th- thank you. L- look at this guy. Whatever they're paying you, it ain't enough. Read I the don't question. No, I'm kissing that much. Uh, it's probably uh, payment enough. Anyways, his question is, why do you bother with the characters of Announcer Man and R-O-8-O-T if they never contribute to the podcast? Hmm. Oh, why do you say yeah. this to me when you know I will kill you for huh? it? Oh, whoa, whoa, Announcer Man, wait. You know, that's a good question. Are you saying that, that you're tired of the two characters? Is that? I mean, we're, we're, clearly we've taken care of the R-O-8-O-T problem with uh, this great <laughs> robot. Uh, Psybos. I don't really know. Uh, I think that they help us with transitions. I yeah, think that... I enjoy their their contributions that they do give us. There may not be many, but you know, O8OT is just supposed to be the show producer. I mean, if you listen to a radio show, those guys don't talk much. They're doing their thing. They're back behind the scenes. And sometimes the uh, hosts can egg them on enough that they'll actually join in, but it's not their deal. That's not what they're supposed to do. What really needs to happen is those guys just need to be kicked off the introduction. I don't know, uh, how was it that they wound up getting to introduce themselves every time we started a show anyways? I think they just spoke too much and we had to pay them or allow them to do that. Wasn't that the deal? Uh. Well, it may be that Gord is saying that the joke has worn thin and they're no longer amusing. Possible. You know, if that's the case, then uh, I guess one of us hasn't been doing his job. Maybe we'll phase those characters out uh, in favor of this awesome new robot we've got here today. Yeah. Next question. Sycophantic butt licking. That's not appropriate language for the show. Oh, come on. Okay, it looks like uh, this one's from our good friend Liz Mir. Uh, her, her name's Lizanne Hurd. So we, we're supposed to call her Lizanne Hurd now. Why? Uh, I think she's just had enough of you massacring her uh, actual name, perhaps. I don't know. Well, hey, what's hard to say about Mirzievsky? Come on, man. Okay, her question is, in a perfect world, what do you hope will happen with your podcast? Groupies. Next question. No, uh, you go. You go. <laughs> Groupies ripping off clothing. 
Large breasted groupies. Many breasted groupies. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> One of those total recall chicks, huh? Yeah, it might as well. It's a sci fi podcast after all. You know, I've had a lot of different ideas as to what I would like to happen with the show. I've considered trying to see if we could get it on an actual radio station so that, you know, we could be broadcast over the air and maybe it could become syndicated and we could rule the world. Ruling the world is good. You know, that would be cool. We've already She's... got to the point where there's so many stories we can't ever produce them all. <laughs> that was ever a dream of ours. but Just having a sponsor or a donor that gives us enough money that we can pay people real wages for their work instead of uh, these terribly low wages you know that would be nice it would be fun to be able to do something like this for a living but you know there's not a lot of people that get to do that kind of stuff and usually you have to be some kind of political ranting person to be able to get to white people make a living off of a show white males need to be put behind bars or in camps uh, funny joke chris thank you <laughs> oh, it is getting a little awkward. Yeah. Maybe you've got the groupie you've been wishing for. <laughs> Breasts, remember? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll continue to talk. Uh, I would imagine that the show will evolve a little bit uh, or devolve. Yeah. In... De-evolve, sir. Thank you, Alex. Is that okay to go on to the next one? Yeah, I think so. So this one is from our good, uh, our co-producer. Produced an episode just uh, the other week. Uh, yeah. Brian Lincoln says, how many different accents have each of you done for the show? Three. Next question. <laughs> favorite and least favorite. Okay. Well, that I can answer. I, and I, I bet I can answer for you on your favorite. Correct me if I'm wrong. You love to do the club voice. <laughs> I do like the club voice. That was uh, definitely one of my favorites. And I think I loved it just because I was able to be so over the top with it. I didn't have to pretend that I was not a red cartoon pig. I just got to go for it and go all out, be crazy. Whereas other times when I've had to do accents, it's had to be accent and acting the part. You know, when I did the same voice, nearly the same voice anyways, when we did that story Lost, it was much more difficult because I also had to act and be like, oh no, I'm losing the woman that I love or whatever. And I had to try and put that along with the accent into it. And that was harder, not as easy. So maybe the same accent is my favorite and least favorite. What is your favorite and least favorite? We've had a lot of fun with accents. You know, I, I didn't want to just brush off his question, but it would take a long time for us to come up with all the accents that we've done. Yeah, how many? We did the English accent on Raising Archie. You know, tell me another one, Zave. <laughs> and the French guy, or for Xavier Capdeville. We've yeah, done the Scottish. Was... We've done the, uh, the yeah. Chinese lady for uh, Mars in His Hand. You did the German voice for Uberman. Oh, and the Russian voice for the first. Uh, oh, right. Um, as Mara's Teclan. <laughs> yeah, I guess we didn't do an accent for that, but we did have to pronounce the words for that, which was pretty rough. And you had to be Z, who was, again, a Frenchman. Shoot, I knew what my favorite was, and I've lost it. I had the chance to. I have the cure for the plague of the 20th century, and I've lost it. Was it when you were doing the Sean Connery voice on the edge of the map? Or? That was not Sean Connery. Oh, that's right. It wasn't. You just kept slipping into it on accident. <laughs> there are no dwarf women. That one was really Oh, that fun. one's your favorite? But no, no. I think oh, of that's... all the voices I've done, the most fun was the Australian slash Canadian oh, right. accent from Man in the Box. <laughs> fun. That hairy bastard. It, He'll uh... be out in a boat right <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yeah it was so much fun and it didn't matter if it didn't sound like a canadian it didn't sound like an right. Aussie. Uh, it was supposed to be a combination of the two and so yeah i can't imagine however. how there could be a combination that was so <laughs> much fun i love to do the accents on the show when you did the prissy jane austen a couple weeks ago <laughs> uh, wasn't that a blast to, that was to, fun like, little did mrs baxter oh, mrs salisbury no right yeah i almost did that in a woman's voice too because when i first read that story yeah that's what i thought of was some jane austen mom of whoever that's always gossiping and it's just yeah it was so perfect for that okay we have a question here uh from cameron chase what kind of story that you've not done on the air yet would you most like to do 
I talked about the I wanted to do a werewolf story, and I guess like cats and dogs counts. Okay, but we still haven't done a vampire story. Oh I, yeah, I want to do a vampire story, and I would say oh, I, I want to do a zombie story, but uh, kind of got some on the way, huh? We do. So there's that. Yeah, uh, you. I don't think we've done one that could really qualify. I'd like to do a really cool kind of a space opera kind of story where, you know, you've got the admiral of all the flotilla of spaceships. And And at some point, would he say, it's a trap? (laughs) That would be perfect. (laughs) Just as they're getting out their Admiral Akbar cereal. No, stop, kids. It's a trap. Yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, (laughs) Some sort of space opera. I've read several of those stories and, you know, some of my favorite uh, sci-fi and you don't see as much of it anymore. Maybe it's just been done too much. I don't know. But that would be fun. Something like that. So, you mean something like absurd and wacky and campy? No, or- it do- no, it doesn't have to be. I would probably prefer it to be taken seriously. It's not a parody of the old stuff that you used to read when you were a kid, but something that actually takes it seriously. And another one that would be fun would be like a film noir detective kind of thing. Uh-huh. Like it was a rainy October morning when she walked into my office, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know what accent I was just doing then, but if we actually <laughs> had a story, we wouldn't do that accent. That was that can go along with Liz's question. There's a lot of things that we would like to still be able to do. And, Uh you know, I'd like to do another superhero story along the lines of Uberman. But, you know, with this, like, the hands on your hips when you talk and unhand her, you vile, you know, uh, asshole. No, what? (laughs) Wait a minute. Or or whatever the superhero. Yeah, the hands on the hips guy wouldn't say that. Well, I'm not real good at the whole ad lib thing. (laughs) Next question. All right. This one is from uh, Cameron Carlson. Uh, What has been the biggest argument you guys have had about the show? Ooh. Was it about feedback? (laughs) I don't imagine so. Oh, scripted arguments don't count then. (laughs) Sometimes scripted arguments, you're like, I'm not going to read that line. You you said fare thee well. Nobody (laughs) says that. There's the argument. It's me saying, no, I'm not going to read that crappy line, Rich. Well, you used the W word in the story one time or in in, in something and I wouldn't read it. Oh, yeah. So there's that. Um, No, I don't know. I'm old and set in my ways and I, I don't like change and i don't like not to get my way so you know i've pitched a fit about certain things um things that get edited out of the show that i don't want to get edited out uh i get real pissed off about you you get pissed off about me not oh, usually there I mean, was supposed to be a comma there it's you that cuts them out so yes but <laughs> creative commons things and f- copyright fair use fair use i i get real panty bunched about I just feel like we should be able to do whatever we want on the show since we're not making any money for it. But no, you answer this question. What have you argued about? Well, I was thinking that might be the same thing. Yeah, where what kind of things can we do on the show? How far is going too far? You know, we can't just take any old song and use the entire thing. You know, they need to be ones that people are allowing us to do that with and stuff like that. And, you know, that can be trouble. But, you know, the, probably the biggest argument is yet to come. And it will be right before we go off the air for a long, long time. (laughs) Could be. Okay, we've got a question here from Stephen W. Black. He says he wants to know, what does the name Doonstief mean? It's crazy that in all these episodes we've done, nobody's ever asked that. Yeah. To be honest, Stephen W. Black, I, I don't know. I meant to ask sometime in the past, and then I just got so used to saying Doonstief. Can you answer that? Just let's get that out of the way. It's it's a stupid thing. When I was a kid, we used to make movies all the time. I guess it's what made me wind up uh, in film school later on and waste my life. But uh, one time we made a movie where we did it basically where we were editing in camera. We had a guy and he was having a fight with himself. So, you know, we'd stop the camera and then we'd trade clothes. And then uh, the guy would be back again, and he would say something, and then we'd stop the camera, and he would trade clothes. And so basically, there was a nerdy guy, and he was supposed to be having a fight with a gangster guy. And uh, a friend of mine just said, you know, he was the gangster, and he wanted to invent a name for his gang. And so he said, yeah, the Doonstief is my gang. And yeah, from there on, they called themselves the Doonstief gang. If you go to Watts, 
or uh, Compton or any of those places, you'll find that the Doonstief, it's got a harder core than the Crips and the Bloods and those have, but uh, not as big a gang. We started it, so there's that. Okay, Stephen, I hope you regret ever asking that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a question from Cameron Crew. For Rish, what is it like to be the biggest chode in podcasting? Come on, man. That, that's not even a cool question. Yeah, okay, you, you may not like me or what I do on the show, um, but, you know, I work really hard. You can hear my voice is all gone from how much we've recorded today. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, Abby Hilton likes me, and that means something. Hmm. Ne- next question. Uh, this one says, let's see, Dear Rish, you are a huge chode. Sincerely, Abby Hilton. Oh, that's not a question. Sorry, uh, I shouldn't have read that one, I guess. Ah, uh, okay. Next question uh, from Chase Cameron. Are you guys really going to do an all-musical episode? Yeah, we did mention that once, huh? I guess we probably mentioned it a couple of times. I, don't, I, don't I know. thought the all-singing episode was last that's, that's week. That's funny. Um, no, seriously, <laughs> uh, we did talk about it. Yeah, maybe announcer man won't stand for it. <laughs> He'll quit the show. Maybe that's how we can phase this character out. There you go. He'll quit the show. Is this really uh, what you guys want to be talking about tonight? I, you know, I would like to. It would be a lot of fun, but uh, it would be so much work. Yes, there I is can't that. Even, uh, dude. Just uh, the other day, I was listening to Drabblecast, and Norm Sherman did this whole parody of Little Shop of Horrors where he sang three or four songs. He even had some girl come in and do Audrey's voice. How about that, Audrey? I, it was so awesome. But I can't even imagine how much work that would have been. It's hard enough to try and get the show out on a weekly basis, and and we never accomplished that. What what do you think? Would you want to do an all-musical episode? Oh, I have so much talent that I could easily do an all-musical episode. But, yeah, I have to agree with you. You know, doing all that work is probably not worth it. It'll be something that people listen to once and then they delete off their iPod and move on with life. So, yeah, I don't think we'll ever do an all-musical episode, but we'll probably, the second announcer man goes out for a cigarette break, we'll sing a song here or there or something. I I don't know, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, you said it, (laughs) Chewie. All right, here's one from, oh, it's a repeat question. Lizanne Hurd is back. If it's about calling me a chode, let's just skip to the end. Should I skip the part about you being a douche, too, or is that... Yeah, let's... Uh, next oh, okay, question. skip that, too. Oh, okay. She says, what has surprised you the most in the last two years? Disappointments, victories, joys, easiest, hardest. So there's a lot of things in this question. Uh, we'll start at the start. What is there something that surprised you the most in the last two years? Sometimes when people have nice things to say about the show, they've enjoyed listening to us or that we helped their holiday break or, or they made their commute better. Something that surprised the crap out of me the other day was I volunteered to do a voice on a uh, on another podcast on one of those audio drama things. Uh-huh. And the guy had heard me before. Oh. Uh, that really amazed me. And, and we always joke that we've only got one listener. But I think all in all, we probably have about seven. Yeah, and that's that's that is surprising. That is really cool when you get those really nice comments, and you know you work really hard on the show, and when somebody acknowledges that. When we did that Cory Doctorow story, for example, the other week, Cory Doctorow's been around the internet quite a bit, and he's had quite a lot of adaptations of his work and stuff like that. Groupies? You probably got groupies, yeah. But when he posted about episode two of uh, A Place So Foreign, he said something like, honestly, this is one of the best adaptations that I'd ever heard of my work. And that really meant something to me, you know, because this is a guy that I'm sure had lots of adaptations. And so I guess you could say that was a surprising thing to hear. That was really cool. If that was a victory, I guess we could go jump ahead to that. Um, What disappointments have there been in the last two years, any, that you can think of? The last, you know, Indiana Jones movie might have been a little bit better. Oh, I think there are, yeah, disappointments in relation to the podcast. Oh, you and I have lost entire episodes. We've lost entire (laughs) stories. That's true. Those were pretty bad. With the computer going down and things like that. And that makes it really difficult. 
it doesn't sound like we've done a lot of work on at least this part of the podcast, but it, it is hard to sit down and read the story. You know, you worked a full day and then we get together and do this. I mean, like right now, it's 3.11 in the morning. Oh, gosh, we need to hurry up and wrap this up. So let's check that for the hardest part of the show. Sometimes it's difficult just to motivate ourselves to, to keep doing it, put in the hours or whatever. It's been great to hear the feedback and people that really like us and, you know, people that are willing to donate money or uh, their time or you know, just mention us on their podcasts or on their websites and all that. that, that all that stuff is really good. I'm, I'm not a happy person, so I have no idea what joy is. <laughs> but there have been times when I've been really proud of what we've accomplished on the show or, or, or something has been really funny. Yeah. You know? We've put out even some of our own work on the show. And uh, in both cases, you know, we've gotten positive comments. You know, even when people didn't realize that this story was me sneaking it out under some other name. You know, people have said nice things about the story, and that, I guess, could be a joy of the show. The story stood on its own feet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That makes me feel happy. We're both so tired right now, I don't think either of us could stand on our own feet. So, Liz, I remember one time... I wrote an essay and put it out on the internet and a guy emailed me and he said that he used part of my essay when he was talking to a girl and it got him laid. <laughs> what was your essay on? Uh, it was when I moved away to LA and I was saying goodbye to the, the life that I had known. And, huh. Uh, wow, that's a good... Was, that was such an astoundingly cool thing to hear. I mean, it would have been cooler if it had gotten me laid... I know that has nothing to do with the Dune, Steve, but it's just when you realize that people pay attention or listen to something that you've worked on and it matters to them and maybe it's made their lives better or certainly naked or, or you know, things like that. That's, that's just really cool. That's one of the coolest things that anybody has said to me. And uh, yeah, you did mention groupies, didn't you? <laughs> so, yeah, that goes all the way back to our first question, doesn't it? Yeah. That brings us to the end of the show. It's about bloody time! Well then, hey, we'll just we'll leave it at that. Thank you for listening all the way through, if you did. Yeah. And uh, thank you, everybody who has helped us continue this podcast this past year, so who's subscribed, who's donated, who, who's been friendly, who's had something nice to say. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. And so the quote for today is... Take this job and shove it. Oh, wait. Optimus Prime uh, declared a moratorium on quotes, right? Indeed. I'm that Optimus Prime. All right. Megatron. We're, we're done, I guess. Okay. Well, hey, you guys take care, and we will talk to you soon. See you. Announcer Man, at your service. The Dune Steef is released under a creative, non-commons attribution... The Dune Steef is released under a Creative Commons Attribution No Deviations License. Derivation. Derivatives? Okay. The Dune Steef is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Deriv. Derivatives? Eh, I get it right. Non Commercial No Deriv. Deri Why do I have der derivatives? That's just weird. It's those stupid things on Wall Street. No derivatives license, so you can share the show with whomever you'd like, but you cannot change for it or alter. You cannot change for it? Charge. I guess I'm dumb. I can't read today. I'm tired. The Dunstorf is released under a Creative Commons attribution. Okay. So long, folks. I'm going for a smoke break. Take two. Been two years since we started this whole thing out. It has. And, and it seems like last year we commemorated it by jerking off. Uh, we didn't have any time to yeah. do it. Uh, things have been raping us, frankly. Wow.